Welcome to Old Guy Tech, the OGT.TV recording studio. Technology for the rest of us. 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 Hi, I'm Rob Charney, Old Guy Tech TV. I'm here today with Sheriff John Diagostini of El Dorado County, and we're just going to kind of talk about what's going on and how things have been for John since he's taken over as sheriff, and uh, I think he's got some exciting things to tell us. So we're going to really look forward to this. And John, thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, great, thank great. You. So why don't you just tell us how's it been? I mean, how's it feel now? It's, uh, you know, it's one year now, right at one year. January 3rd will be one year since I was sworn in. Things are great. Um, you know, I was I was just saying a little bit ago that uh, you know a lot of had a lot of folks ask me, oh my gosh, is, was it all you you thought it would be? And it's been um, everything and more. I, I expected everything I was getting into. I knew what I was getting into, and uh, it's been fantastic. We've done already a lot of good things. A lot of changes taking place. Um, change is tough, especially for law enforcement because right. uh, it's it's new. Right. Um, right. You know, we tend to get settled into and like our our things a certain way. Um, but for the most part, it's been going fantastic. Um, you know, the budget uh, obviously is the biggest thing facing anybody throughout the whole state involved in government and private sector. Right. Um, but we're, uh, we're we're getting through it. We're doing good. We took them the the, the huge cuts uh, uh, last budget go around. We're on target this year to to come in under budget. Um, we expect to stay on that trend. Um, and looking forward to whatever the board gives us as yeah. a target next year. Your Hopefully, fight. we hope. We hope. <laughs> I'd be, I thought I'd never hear myself just pray for a status quo budget, but <laughs> that's all we can hope for. Sure, uh, absolutely. Best, best case scenario. Yeah. So, for the most part, the, you've been able to work with what you they, you've been given, I suppose you say, and and uh, you know, you've got some things. What do you, do you have anything new? coming down the road that would affect the budget or you expect to, to have a problem with? Um, well, you know, one of the biggest things facing um, law enforcement sheriffs throughout the state is the realignment, AB 109. Right. Um, with the money that we're expected to get from the state to uh, work with AB 109, that the Community Corrections Partnership came up with our budget for the um, stakeholders in El Dorado County, um, we'll, be, we'll be fine. Um, one thing about the realignment uh, issue that we are unique, one of the very few unique counties in the state, is that, to use the term, we have room at the inn. Mm. So our um, inmate population, we can handle an increase without having to release, do releases and and uh, put knuckleheads back out on How about the street. That? I, I had no idea. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a huge issue. I mean, there's, you know, the, the, the state of California, I believe the number is 30-some thousand. They have to reduce population over the next two years. Mm -hmm. They're not doing that by opening the doors and letting people out. They're right. doing it by uh, um, attrition. Okay. So when somebody paroles now, they don't uh, go to parole. They come to under the control of the county under probation. Mm -hmm. So probation has that new responsibility. When they reoffend, which statistics show they're going to reoffend, right. when they reoffend, if it's not a, um, if it's a non-serious, non-violent, or non-sex crime, and it falls within those subsections, they will no longer be serving their sentence out in state prison. <laughs> They'll be sending it out, or spending that time in the in the county, county jail. Right. Sentences up to, you name it. Oh really? So, yes. So now where we. Bef uh, prior to realignment, we were looking at sentences of one year, year or less. Right. Now we've had already, we've had, uh, the last numbers I got were a few weeks ago and we were already at 4109 um, sentences, um, realignment sentences, um, the most of which being seven years. Wow. So the cumulative effect of that over time is what is going to fill our jail. Right. right. But right now we're in good shape. We're running an average daily population of anywhere between... 350 and 370, um, and we do have 469 beds between Placerville and South Lake Tahoe. Are you going to have to house these people in different in different blocks? Are you going to put them in with the general population? Or um, It depends. It depends on what the crime is and what they get classified as. Okay, um, right. But some yes, some no. Um, and that's another issue that, you know, we faced. Even though I said we had 469 beds in our jail, we could literally be busting at the seams 
at 370, 380, 390 uh -huh. because of classification, because you can't right. house this knucklehead with that knucklehead and right. that knucklehead with that knucklehead. Yeah, I understand it's a very difficult process that you have to go through. Yeah. And, you know, uh, may it be offense, may it be um, gang affiliation, may it be color, may it be whatever. Absolutely. There's a lot of work that you have to do to make sure that people are in, in kind, so to speak. Is that... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So to basically pr protect <clears throat> us from from litigation. Uh-huh. Litigation. I mean, if I put um, northern gang members in with southern gang members... Right. Um, ...and they ended up killing one another, they'd be pointing the finger at me. Right. So right. we always have to be cognizant of those issues and take classification very seriously. But, again, I, I have a very positive outlook on it. Right. We are, we're in a pretty good position right now. Um, we're doing everything we can to keep ourselves in that position. Um, my, you know, uh, my worry is, and this will be the first uh, media place where I've actually said this on the air, but um, uh, before the, the governor through um, the whole realignment process promised California State Sheriff's Association and all the sheriffs in the state, 58 of us, that he would get the constitutional guarantees to um, for our funding hmm. to make sure that AB 109 was properly funded or adequately funded. When it came to a point here just in the recent past that time limits were coming up for ballot initiatives right. and nothing had been done yet, <clears throat> right. um, State Sheriff's Association got together and put together a ballot initiative, which basically just, just simply guarantees funding within the general fund for uh, realignment. I think it was three or four days after that, the governor came out with his ballot initiative, mm. which also includes funding for schools, which is fine. Right. But it also includes those tax increases that everybody's heard about. Right. Um, a, a tax on those earning over $250,000 a year, and I think it's a quarter cent sales tax for four years or five years when yeah, that sunsets. Yeah, yeah. If it's my, sunsets. My fear is, and I, I don't support a tax increase. I right. think that our state should be... Um, should uh, be responsible and prioritize the taxpayers' dollars what they have now. Private sector has to do that. Um, so I don't think a tax increase is going to fly. And when it's all said and done and it doesn't pass, the governor stands back and says, I did my best. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting where we are now with no funding for realignment, which is what I said from day one was eventually this money's going to roll out. Probations can ha can walk away and say the funding's not there. I can't do these programs. The DA can walk away. The public defender, everybody in this in this operation for realignment can step back and say the money's not there. We can't do it. Right. But I still got to house them. You still have to do it. I'm still going to be yeah. stuck with them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think we could probably spend hours on this discussion of Absolutely. the budget in California and Governor Brown. I had a rant. We call it Rob's rant. I don't know if you saw it on YouTube or not, but I kind of got this. Jerry Brown is just driving me crazy. And I won't even get into the gun issues that you know where I stand <laughs> oh, on. Oh, absolutely. And uh, which are just... Much, the, the, much in line with mine. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and this guy is just... He's out of his mind. He's never seen an anti-gun bill he doesn't like. And uh, so we're going to face a lot. But that's another issue for another time. Um, so, so so we've got the, uh, the budget going. You're, you're going good. You're staying on the budget. How, uh, how's the, uh, the number on the deputies doing? How are you doing? Are you losing deputies? Are you going to be able to hold the number at where it has been? Or how's that part going? Well, we're actually hiring. Oh, good. Um, we were down a significant amount um, when I took office. Uh, prior administrations just froze hiring. So through attrition, there was many positions that were vacant. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up uh, surrendering, I think there was, the number I believe was 24 total positions, including correctional officers, mm -hmm. support staff, all kinds of positions right. that I gave up to meet our last budget target. Um, didn't just unfund them, but actually wiped them off the books. But there were um, uh, some deputy positions that were vacant, and there has been more come vacant since I was sworn in. Right. Rather through attrition or through disciplinary action or whatnot. Right. So 
we started the hiring process quite some time ago, and they're finally now swearing in some deputies. Well, I know the the vetting process takes quite a while. So it takes too long. Yeah, we're working on that as well. <laughs> <laughs> we're working on that. Uh, that 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 time process needs to be cut down. It is getting cut down. Um, we're doing better. The county has a new interim um, human resources director who okay. um, we're working very closely with. Um, not only for hiring, but for promotionals and, and things like that. Uh -huh. um, with some of the uh, retirements coming up and some of the vacancies that we've had and been holding on to, we actually have some promotions coming up for every rank. Oh, good. So we're in a, we're in a good spot. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. despite all the budget problems and everything else, um, managing it the way that um, uh, with, with my vision and my my what I believe with the three prong approach is it vital is it, is it necessary is it vital important or is it just nice right um we've been able to uh really ratchet down on some numbers we cut overtime significantly in the last year um it's no longer a given that somebody's going to get overtime it's, right it's overtime is exactly uh, when it's necessary right. absolutely right. necessary yeah so we're in a good spot we're really um we're trying to hire um, where we really need some bodies, not only for the deputies, but correctional officers. Right. The overtime on that in those positions has been um, high lately because we have so many vacancies. Right. There was a study done back in, uh, I think it was 01 or 02, that uh, the, the jail was, I believe, 19, it showed 19 correctional officers, more uh, more positions in the jail. Um it would significantly reduce overtime and uh, um, have the relief that, factor at a point. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. a balance there where right, you have right. so many folks and the overtime goes through the roof. There, there comes yeah. a balance when you have position-wise. Right. So, you know, I'm not comfortable going yet to the board and saying, hey, I need these more positions on the books. Right. But eventually, I mean, it's going to have to come to that, especially through well, realignment and some of the money that comes absolutely. with that. We'll yeah. be able to get some. Oh, well, that, so that'll help with your, your hiring on uh, correctional officers. That That's a good place for, for re young guys to start <laughs> out at. And I think sure. it'd be, a, you know, it's a, it's, it's a great job. I mean, it's a totally different job than deputy, but it's still a great job. And, and unfortunately, they're looked down upon by some entities, and it's they shouldn't be. They should not be. Um, it's huge. I mean, if you want to look at probably what's one of the biggest high liability areas for a sheriff right. for a county right. is right. that jail yeah. Um, yeah that's that's a huge liability so your personnel have to be extremely proficient extremely knowledgeable in the law and what they do um to keep you out of hot water right and uh, the staff here do a fantastic job of yeah that. i've heard nothing but good things from a you know from a lot of people mm -hmm. your, your staff has changed quite a bit just the feeling uh, in the in the community for me, and you know I'm out there a lot. And as president of the Rod and Gun Club, I have an interaction with your your deputies and your range personnel and all that. Um, I've got to tell you, on my side, um, I'm not as uptight or worried as I used to be. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, some of the guys scared me. I mean, they really did. And uh, I'm seeing some great attitudes. Uh, people seem to be a lot happier. Uh, deputies seem to be not scared to come up to somebody and say hi how you're doing just to say hi you know uh you know no i didn't do anything honest instead of that yeah. kind of panic so you guys are doing that's, good that's good well that's good yeah. to hear you know that's the culture change that i'm looking for right um i know you know culture change any change takes time um but it's going there the ships i say the ship's starting to turn it's it's going starting to get in the direction i want to take it um and i'm very very pleased and i hear that a lot too from community members and you know, sometimes I wonder if that's just the people telling me what I want to hear. But yeah, when right. I hear it, it you know that that that's good feedback. Yeah. That's good feedback, and that's that's what I want to see. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's that's great. So, what's on the horizon now? What are we looking at uh, coming down the next few years? That your goal? Uh, well, the next few years, um, obviously, you know, I, I talked about the resident deputy programs. And right. we took a huge step towards that here a few months ago when we changed the schedule. It was in, in the Mountain Democrat in the newspaper um, going to the 12-hour uh, shifts. Mm -hmm. um, it it um, vastly um, grew the size, the shift size, um, where we were staffing seven, eight deputies per shift. Now we're rolling anywhere between nine and 14. Mm. Um, on any given shift um, that's going to set that actually sets me up for two paths um, if the budget stays okay 
um, I said status quo. If we can stay status quo and not have to take any more cuts, then I feel comfortable starting to set up those resident deputy positions in key parts of the county. Right. Mm. If we take more hits than the size of that budget, we can take the punch and still survive and still be able to provide the level of service that I think the community needs. Right. Um, People don't realize how large this, this community, this this county. Oh is. yeah, it's big. I mean, it's big. Seventeen hundred and something square, miles, almost eighteen hundred square miles, and oh yeah, almost two hundred thousand residents. It's quite a job to protect everybody. Mm -hmm. It really is. So those, I think that those positions are sorely needed. Yeah, and they, and they yeah, think that'll be good. So if we can, that's that's one of the, my goals. It's still there. Mm -hmm. We will. I will have that happen in my administration. Um, hopefully, in the next couple of years. Uh, Community um, community meetings. Um, I foresee, hopefully, within the the, the first six months of this of, of next year, um, starting some uh, uh, biannual community meetings mm -hmm. in each supervisorial district. Mm -hmm. So ten meetings a year in, in each of the districts, um, and just a, an opportunity to to get in front of the community in a public forum type and listen. Right. And listen. Right. right. Give Absolutely. A, give a real quick overview on where we're at, how things are on the budget, on um, crime, and then start getting some feedback. Well, that's one of the reasons we wanted you here so badly is because we feel, I mean, we get out to everybody. I and mean, basically, we get out to the world. But anybody 24-7 is going to be able to hear your message. So as you come here more often, you'll be able to get those messages out that you want to get out so that the public know about it. I think it's really important. One of the problems I've always seen with law enforcement is there seems to be such a, a, a wide gap between what people think and what is real. Yeah. And, it's and because the communication's not there. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. You're so. absolutely right. And, and it, it, law enforcement in general throughout this nation has gone down that path mm. and and created that environment and created that, that uh, um, relationship. Yeah. And that's why I, during my campaign, I talked about um, a modern approach to traditional law enforcement. Right. Um, right. Yep. That, that type. And then my total policing philosophy, which right. was total care for victims, witnesses in the community, total enforcement on crime and criminals, and total professionalism. And I preach that all the time in the office. When I go to a briefing or I'm um, just recently, because we're hiring now, I sat down with my field training officers and we had a round table and I let them know, this is what I expect. This is how I want the new guys trained. I, I, I and preach that. Right. This is right. the philosophy. Don't forget it. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, and they, most, I, I, I believe that most of them believe that too. And that it's helping it happen early, mm -hmm. earlier and easier. Mm -hmm. Where I'm sure, you know, I'm sure there's a few that are saying, oh, the old man's kind of, that guy's nuts. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be around for a while, and I think I'm going to outlast good. them. That's so. good. Well, I hear it all the time. That's how I became the old guy, you know. <laughs> I heard that all the time. So how long now have you been sheriff? Almost a year. January Almost 3rd will be one year. How about that? Time time just... It does. Boy, it fleets by. It does. Yeah, well, that that's that's terrific. So, so we've covered kind of the budget, and we've covered the hiring uh, mm -hmm. situation now. What else is, is on your priority list that we, we might want to know about? Um, building my team. Yeah. Um, and these promotions that we have coming up, um, it's going to give me a huge opportunity to uh, start building my team. Um, you know, it's, it's, I inherited an administration. Um, I inherited captains and lieutenants and sergeants, and um, many of which are fantastic. They're doing a great job. Um, and I've, I've worked well with them. They've worked well with me. Um, but they weren't, that's not my team. Right. Um, uh, and this is going to give me the opportunity to really start building my team. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to that. Um, uh, I'd like to think that a lot of uh, employees there are seeing it as a positive thing as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a, it's a really, really good time right now. It's, it's, it's fun time. I would, I actually, I don't think there's much apprehension in the troops. I would, I would, I would tend to see a little bit more than I'm seeing, um, just because it's new. Right. But I think that things are going extremely well. They feel good. Um, you know, I don't think that I'm just living in a vacuum. I think I'm trying to do as much as I can to get the real information on what's happening. Um, you know, for the first time ever, we put out a department-wide survey. 
Hmm. Um, it's never been done. Uh, we The feedback that we got from that, we're actually doing a lot of movement on and making some things happen. One of the biggest things was the schedule change. Uh, most of the uh, employees, most of the deputies and the line staff wanted this type of schedule. Mm-hmm. So we made it happen. Um, there's other issues with take-home vehicles that we're looking at those issues to see if we can save some money. Actually, when you get the the, the, the down to brass tacks and you get the numbers together, right. um, the cost to benefit, in my opinion, for a lot of them, there's a few, the, yeah, we're not going to have any more. We're going to take get rid of some take-home vehicles. Right. Um, but for the most part, the cost to benefit, as far as I'm concerned, of having some of these take-home vehicles uh, out there, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that is the numbers aren't that significant. I think it's it's important. I mean, we talked about the size of this county, and that is just going to help the response times to mm-hmm. have those those guys available basically 24-7. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I know that some of the conservative guys don't agree with me necessarily, and I'm pretty conservative, but I see a lot of benefits. In, in yeah, this. you know, the, there is. There is. You know, there's some... Um, there's some, and I don't want to say now because I haven't even noticed anybody yet. Right. But there are some that, no, this is just, it's been a perk, and it's a nice perk. Sure. Um, but you're never going to respond from home. You're never going to be making those decisions on the road. Right. So there's really no need for that vehicle to be going home. Very few, though. Right. Very few. But for, you know, detectives, um, the narcotics guys, uh, you know, some of, some of the lieutenants, um, one or two of the captains, I mean, they, they're making command decisions. They're responding to, to critical incidents. They're responding out there and, and, and working. Right. Um, and the time that it takes them to roll to the office, to get a vehicle. Right. Um, they don't have the radio. They don't have the, the equipment in the vehicle. Um, when they can just respond and be there on a phone call, on a moment's notice. Right. Um, I, th- I think the cost of benefit is there. Oh, yeah. And when I, was, when I worked street, when I worked the streets, when I worked in investigations in narcotics, um, when I was on SWAT, uh, you know, a lot of those calls when I got them, I I, I had a take home vehicle for a long time, and I responded. Right. I always responded, and I was one of the first ones there because I was able to do that. Right. So, right. the cost of benefit, I I do see it, and I yeah, believe in it. Yeah, I think there's both sides to that, and I and I I can I can truly see uh, that <clears throat> that you got your, you you understand exactly what's going on with it, and I I can't fault you at all. I mm-hmm. I. I'm for it. I, I think it's a good thing. Like I said, I you know, I know some of the others have knocked me a little bit with that favor, yeah. but the heck with it. I don't care. I think <laughs> I think it's important because they, they they can't forget how large El Dorado County is, and and you know there's so many areas out there that it takes so long to respond to mm-hmm. that if that response time can be increased at all, that's the benefit. I Absolutely. mean, you know, what is what is the sheriff's department supposed to be? For the public, I mean, you know, you're supposed to be there to serve mm-hmm. and, and protect. You can't do that if, yeah. you, if your response time's 30 minutes, 45 right. minutes, whatever. Right. It's not going to happen. And if, and I, I guarantee, you know, and I, and I, I, I understand, and I listen to what what those that say, you know, it should all be, t- there should be no take home right. rides. I get that. However, I mean, if you had a family member that was in crisis, the victim of a violent crime, or or something of that nature. God forbid it took my deputies another five minutes or ten minutes or, in the right. case of take-home vehicles, another half hour, an hour to get there. Right. You'd feel differently. Yep. You would. You would feel differently. Yeah, you would. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You're doing really good. Well, we're, we're winding down in time here, and I, I, I want you to get those messages that you think is real important right now to get out. And like I said, we'll get you back in after right after the first of the year and you know, get you to, to talk a little bit more about some other issues. But right now, what are do you think is the critical issues that you're facing and the message that you want to get out? Well, you know, again, it's I'm still working hard and the deputies, a lot of them are working hard and I'm 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 very still focused on that total policing concept and that uh, that culture that still needs work in the sheriff's office. Will always need to be worked on. But from the community standpoint for the community to to understand that, to wave at my deputies, um, force that hand, right. make them wave back, right, right. Um, you know, say hi, introduce yourself. Um, it works both ways. Um, we're not, uh, you know, the deputies aren't. Uh, um, I don't want them to be by nature standoffish, mm-hmm. and they don't want to be that way. 
um, the public tends to look at them, oh, there's the cops. Right. There's the police. There's the cops. We're approachable. We work for you. Um, that's who we're there for. Um, say hi. Um, you know, the budget, uh, I think, I, I, I want to believe that this Board of Supervisors understands the prioritizing that needs to be done with the taxpayer's dollars. And, of course, I'm the sheriff, so I'm a little bit biased, but I believe that the sheriff and public safety is and fire are, are the uh, most important things that the, the soups can um, prioritize those taxpayer dollars with or right, at, right. towards. Um, you know, talk to your elected officials. Talk to your supervisors. I expect to be held accountable. I expect to be held accountable by the people that put me in office. And, you know, the Board of Supervisors, their elected officials as well. Right. Hold them accountable. Right. If you feel the same way, let them know. Let them know that. Um, you know, there's there's one other thing, too, that I've been bringing up, little pieces here and there. It's a big issue. Um, I, I don't want to make a big issue of it now, but I'll, I'll lay it out there. Times are tough. I understand that. But one thing that I have identified in the years since I've been there is the inefficiencies in the sheriff's office that are caused just by geographics, hmm. meaning our office is spread out. The sheriff's office is over 40 years old. I have investigations on one end of town. Right. I have support services on another end of town. I have my radio shop over on another end of town. I'm spending almost four hundred thousand dollars a year on off-site facility leases. Um, you know, I said I'm going to be around for a long time. I plan on doing being around if I'm doing a good job and the folks want to keep me here. People want to keep me here three or four terms. If I can stay around that long, I foresee in my administration a new sheriff's facility. Mm -hmm. um, with my three hundred, with my almost four hundred thousand dollars that I can save a year, along with if the board identifies and is accountable to um, relocate other uh, departments into what I would vacate, they could save a huge portion of their over three million dollars a year that they pay in outside facility right. leases. Right. Right. Yep. So the magic number is right around two and a half million dollars. I think I can show that number right now, $2.5 million, which would buy the county a new sheriff's facility. <clears throat> I'm not ready to jump off the ledge yet because <laughs> it's tough. And I I don't know what the future holds, the near future holds, right, and if that would be. Right. Um, well, I see the struggles that you choice. have with your with your logistics. Uh, you know, just coming in, you know, uh, doing my concealed weapons permit stuff, and and coming in and visiting or saying hi, or whatever. I, I know that you're facing these issues with all these people oh. spread out. It's very difficult. Yeah, it's huge, and not not only for log logistics, but the the true reason why we exist is to prevent crime right. and solve crime, and the inefficiencies in having investigations on one end of town and patrol. At the main office, they don't talk to one another as often as they could. It's amazing how many crimes actually get solved over the water cooler, right? To to use a term, you know, sure. or in the hallway because there's just that communication. Um, another unexpected uh, benefit that Placer County assumed or or, or re, uh, realized when they built their new facility was um, workers' comp claims and sick leave went through the floor, huh? Because it was just a much nicer place to come to. I have personnel working in the old jail where I can't even house criminals because under Title 15 and Title 24, it's not yep. good enough for them. Yep. But I got personnel working in there. I know. And they don't whine. Yeah, they're, they're doing what they have to, but it, it's kind of a cave in there. I've been yeah. in there. Oh, yeah. 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 So but, someday, someday, yeah. it's just, you know, f f the community can keep that in the back of their mind that uh, if they have any ideas on... On location or ways to save money to get a new facility sometime in the future, I'm always listening. That's great. That's great. Well, John, this has been super. You know what? There's so much more that we, we want to get out and do with you. Uh, you know, if you have another hour sometime next month, and let's you know, let's get more in depth because I know you've got a couple of new things that are coming out that you want to talk about uh, in the coming years. And, um, I want to be here for you. I want to help. Hey, maybe someday Jonathan and I will go, you guys got something going on top. We'll come out and film it. We'll do our uh, own cops. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and we can show exactly how well uh, Colorado <coughs> County does and stands up with everybody. Nice. So I, I want to thank you very much for coming. I thank really you. appreciate it, John. Thank it's you, been Rob. great. Thank you. 
And hey, thank you for watching. And hey, this is Rob with Old Guy Tech TV, technology for the rest of us. In this case, is the roundtable talk with Sheriff D'Agostini. And I want to thank John quite a bit for that. And I want to thank you for watching. So thank you very much. Hi, this is Rob Charney with Old Guy Tech TV. And I want to talk to you today about Windfall. Windfall has two outstanding offers for you to take advantage of. They have their 12-week business-only ad for just $60. That's just $5 a week. You're not going to find a better deal anywhere. Windfall has a rewards program like no other. A real windfall. Give us five and your ad is free. So refer five people or businesses and you get your ad for free. Visit Windfall on the web at www.shopthewindfall.com or call 530-621-1698. Everybody needs a windfall. Thank you, windfall. See you soon.